Hello, this is Tim Daniels from THS Sporting Center, and I'm going to do a little short video on uh, my uh, bowl rack that I've built for my uh, boat. And uh, I don't have a chance to uh, pretty it up with all my uh, uh, latest and greatest. Some of my other bows are at the shop. So, uh, for demonstration purposes, what we have here is a, uh, a, an Oneida, Oneida, it's one of the uh, custom shops. Uh, bows that Oneida offered, and it's a it's a hell of a nice bow, and uh, one of the uh, custom PSCs that I had built years ago, uh, 50 pound limbs. Uh, this bow rack, though, I uh, slowly came along and developed it as I as I came up with some other ideas, and one of these ones is to put pegs in here. This cuts down on the bow sort of turning from side to side as much, and also acts as a divider for them. I use a bungee cord with a little ball on it to uh, throw the straps on them when I'm underway. That keeps the bows from scooting around too much. These are designed to sit off of the, uh, the, the real seats. Um, and uh, I haven't played around or set this up much for AMS bottle styles. Uh, because again, the way I set this distance between here and here was uh, to balance the bow based off of its real seat. So, this is attached to uh, my ladder. Uh, it has an overall height off the floor at 43 inches. Um, the, the frame itself starts at 9 inches when attached to the, the, the stairs here. Um, this galvanized pipe or galvanized square tube is one and a quarter inches wide. Um, and I use galvanized here, uh, and also the same thing here. I also put my aluminum camera tube in this right here, and it runs at uh, uh, probably closer to a 20 degree angle. This particular piece though here is 36 inches. These tubes here are actually the next size down being one inch. So these are one inch square tubes galvanized. They are 34 inches. Same thing then again with the one on the top is 34 inches. On the sides here, I built a bracket so this sits back some. And this just comes back enough to get the bows tipped back a little bit more. You can change that angle as it relates to this depending on uh, what angle you're setting this at. So the more straight this is, the further back this would need to be to get you a proper seat forward. But this one inch tube here, this particular bar is three inches long. If you can bring that camera around here. You can see how it sort of sandwiches in right there. So this piece is three inches. I just used a little bit of uh, pipe insulation and some zip ties to keep the bows from getting nicked up. Um, oh, the distance between here and here. So the distance between the, this, the plate that runs uh, horizontally is 18 inches in my setup. So you have 18 inches from here to the top of this. That's what gives you your, your span from your rod seat to where it starts laying against the bow. All right, so this is one inch aluminum square tube this is relatively the light gauge stuff. What I did is used a little bit of rubber uh, uh, spray-on paint, um, flex seal or something along that lines there, or a undercoat. Uh, this helps keep it from rattling around when the inside of here. I slide that in, and again, that just helps cut down on the rattle. Down here, I ended up installing a bolt that runs through the bottom of this to attach it. And that also acts as the point where this will then stop. It gives it its, its base. I also went with two uh, bolts on either side of this. And on these bolts, what I did is I cut out a little piece of plastic tube to uh, protect the bow from the uh, threads in here. And then just use like uh, uh, wax nuts or lock nuts on the back side of these to uh, lock them in place. So you basically just had a, uh, a carriage bolt um, or any type of sh you know, shoulder bolt 
Um, I want something with a relatively smooth, you know, head on it, and then I put a piece of hard PVC tube plastic along the side, cut it to length, and then tightened it down. Uh, over here, I just used a couple of zip ties to help draw this in, keep this from bouncing out because I couldn't tie this pipe directly to this. Uh, if so, I had had to run a, a fastener through it. Um, if I went through the side of it, same thing, I'd run into problems with attaching this tube here. So, basically what I did is I just ran two of these pegs on each side and then zip tied them, pulled them tight, zipped them together, and that keeps this pipe from rotating out. You could probably throw a little silicone in on this as well to help freeze it in spot as long as you don't get in the way of taking this tube in and out. This is another little thing that I came up with. I got these uh, scales off of eBay, and they're called crane scales. Uh, it's a you know a scale that comes in from uh, 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 a, a really cheap you know Chinese scale. Uh, but I what I did is I ground down one of the hooks there to make it a little easier to put in the gills of a fish or through the uh, you know uh, some part of the fish to hold it in place. Uh, and what I did is I put a little eyelet up here. So now you could hang this and then you could weigh your fish. And it's over the bucket that's usually right down here as well. This is a pull-out insert where the, the bucket goes in. So if you get you're taking a nice picture of the fish, you can have it there. Have a picture of your scale. Another little nice feature to have in there. Um, also over here is part of my setup. I have a uh, keep an extra little hand gaff to uh, help load and unload uh, fish. Um, I got my uh, water hose here. This is part of uh, for uh, cleaning off the boat. Uh, you know, after a night shoot, and then again about that water tank system that I have uh, talked about in other videos. That water tank system, uh, this is my latest incantation of it. Uh, what I did is I had a, a weight right here. This weight uh, helps weigh down this foot valve, which keeps it in the water. I use this screen here, which is used uh, for like um, lint. It's a, like a lint trap, and that helps keep out some of the weeds. And so I use a siphon tube to run up over to here. There's another valve right, or a screen right inside there, which cuts out uh, or helps cut down on the uh, the debris that goes into the seaflow motor. The seaflow motor pumps it out into this T. This is a uh, pressure relief tank or like a little bladder tank. Then I'm also using like an expandable hose here. Uh, that expandable hose also adds to my capacity of water and the pressure. Uh, gives you me a little bit more pressurized water longer.